Excellency, thank you very much for giving us time to uh, just pose a few questions because you are the uh, big leader of our own zone. So we thought I'll have a word with you. Uh, yesterday, you made a very uh, strong pitch uh, that the geopolitical intense competition is actually, uh, you know, a possibility of uh, spilling over into Indian Ocean. And you also mentioned about what is happening in the West Asia. Now, uh, do, do you think in your uh, opinion that chances of its uh, spilling over, number one, and secondly, can Indian Ocean region remain a zone of peace in this kind of situation? Indian Ocean must remain a, a zone of peace. What has happened in my view on the situation in West Asia is because of the American backing of the war in Gaza and the bombing. Not America's back on Israel, which everyone expects and America does it, but because of the backing uh, for the Gaza uh, war. I mean, it, it's created a lot of uh, prejudice and antagonism against the uh, US, and especially in the Indian Ocean, where you have the uh, Islamic countries all the way down to Indonesia. Uh, it, 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 it's the, the popular reaction is against U.S. that even if the governments want to maintain uh, close cooperation, it may not be possible for a few years. Remember, few years count a lot in geopolitics. Two years is big in geopolitics. So that's, that's, that's really going to be the issue for uh, U.S. Uh, secondly, as I said, uh, the West tried to break Russia economically, but Russia has succeeded in coming into the uh, Indian Ocean. They have already had a good relationship with India and that's continuing. They have also now uh, had their relations with China, but they have uh, got relations with a lot of the other countries in the region, especially with Iran and even to the, they have come into the Bay of Bengal. So in, in a way, America has brought Russia in here. They've gone and uh, uh, they, they, they've uh, created antagonism against themselves. China has been there anyway and uh, Iran is also active. So it's, it's going to be difficult and for the US especially this year, which is the election year, they can't be very active. So two years out with antagonism, the new administration comes uh, or the present administration changes its policy. So two, three years can be a, uh, can have a big impact. As Harold Wilson said, one week is a long time in politics. Uh, yes. <laughs> so the, uh, that, that brings me to the next question, that how do countries in our region, Indian Ocean region, immediate littorals, how do they keep out of this great power competition? I think we've all got to agree. And we worked it. I mean, India, all of us have some other been. It doesn't mean that great power should not be there. They have to be in the ocean. They will be there. They have taken part in uh, exercises like against the Somali pilots. But basically, we must agree on the freedom of navigation in the Indian Ocean and how we control uh, great power rivalry in the area. Uh, India, Sri Lanka especially, have been very active from 1940s, from the time of independence. Other countries, uh, South Africa, I, I think we can talk to them. We can also talk with countries like US, China and all others are there. If, if, we, if we agree, the others have to fall in line. We are not saying don't be there, don't have your... China has bases, Japan has one base, you can't say no to them. America has Diogasia, but we've got to control what happens. <coughs> Uh, in that case, sir, do you, do you recommend the, uh, that our immediate four, five, six countries who are impacted by this geopolitical competition, likely to be impacted, should they have a consensus generating mechanism? We should have, we should have a consensus generating mechanism, I think both for three things, for political issues, for trade and also for ecology, which is a big issue now. Uh, do you see that you know something like an EU type of parliament or something? I don't sure. think we have EU type, but there can be understandings and agreements. I can't see uh, 
Indian Ocean countries forming that and it, it's too big. I mean, basically, you have very big numbers. You have India on one hand, then there's Indonesia, uh, Bangladesh, Pakistan, Iran, all are big, big countries, not looking at the East African coast. So, But it will be the powerful one. By 2050, my, my idea is it, it's going to be powerful. In India will have, as I mentioned, India's uh, GDP might even go up by about uh, eight times. Indonesia will go up. So just imagine if others go up four times. I sincerely hope so. It yeah. does. Uh, so that uh, that brings me to the immediate neighborhood, mm. uh, all of us. Uh, is there a requirement that you see that we should have a joint HADR type of organization so that we can come to assistance of Let's say the Bay of Bengal is quite prone to. No, no, we should we should work on, work on it. I remember, in time to come, Maldives is going to be in trouble. Yes. Maybe even Seychelles. So let's. I think we have to do this. We have to have these agreements. So, even I mean, basically, what one thing that worries me is the melting of Himalayas and the impact on Bangladesh, on India, on Sri Lanka, on the Bay of Bengal. What is your view on, uh, let's say, uh, intertwining of the economies of Indian Ocean countries, or maybe the immediate neighborhood that yeah. I mean. We, we, we are for it. That's why we are upgrading our agreement with India from FTA to the Comprehensive Economic and Technological uh, Agreement. We also want to have a, uh, uh, enhance our agreements with Bangladesh. We are applying to RCEP, so that we'll basically from India all the way to Japan and Australia will be in one free trade zone. So we have to work this out. Of course, India uh, didn't join RCEP, but I'm sure RCEP would be more than happy to have some agreement with India, as Bangladesh. So we let's see at least from uh, India, from Mumbai all the way to Tokyo, and down to Melbourne or even yeah, uh, Wellington. Let let's have our agreements. That I think that's a workable solution. I think that, that's that's what we have to do. Yes. Just one more question related to this uh, that. Uh, uh, do you see uh, any specific two, three points which the island nations would like India to lend their hand in? Well, uh, others are small island nations. But with us, we are looking at more closer integration uh, with India. That's why we are looking at connectivity, financial connectivity, uh, energy connectivity, land connectivity, so that this is the age in which countries work closely. Bangladesh already has with India, so Sri Lanka to, to work on this. You know, with Sri Lanka and, uh, has been very good at handling the big power, immediate big power sort of competition or rivalry, so to say. And you have been at the apex for uh, so many years in various capacities. Uh, do you think that it is now possible uh, for Sri Lanka to probably uh, get these two, three countries who are at uh, perpetually at, you know, friction point. Is, do you see a role for Sri Lanka? I think those countries have to do it themselves. India and China had a very good relationship. I think there are a few outstanding issues. What we can do is to ask them to sort it out. But I think getting into the middle of it, <laughs> no, you know, it's uh, <laughs> matchmaking is not our... Uh, feel, but I think there's been a lot of, I must say, in the last uh, five, ten years, I've seen a lot of interaction between India and China. Though, so we, we could ask for it. There are few areas, especially the Himalayas, that have to be sorted out. But we are, we are all for it. I mean, any way we can help, we'd like to do that. Uh, we, but it will make a big difference. All of a sudden, Asia comes up uh, with two big powers uh, coming in there, but. Uh, Let's see how, how it can, how we, how we can work it out. Sometimes it, it will take a bit of time, but uh, we all hope it can be there. And actually, uh, India Foundation is more than good to start talking on these issues. Yes, sir, <laughs> you will, very much. Yeah. Uh, the last question, sir, probably that, uh, uh, how do you see Indian Ocean's role in the larger Indo-Pacific construct? Indian Ocean uh, has been quite different from uh, the Pacific, but we are connected. We, we have to accept that. 
It's it's a different one I mean, for thousands of years, and it is sort of evolved. I mean, basically, if you look at it, uh, in that context, I think we should build on what is there. Now, look at India has okay. You had uh, all the way down to South Africa, Indians have gone down there. They are out there in Australia. We have people. Uh, it's easy for us to sit down, I think, and talk it over. It's, it's different in. Uh, uh, Pacific, the islands are getting together, they haven't had that cultural relations. And if you look at it basically, look, uh, Ramayana has taken you all the way to Vietnam. True. Theravada Bud Buddhism has also taken us all the way to Vietnam. True. So the, these are type of links uh, we have. And uh, remember it is uh, India, from India that Buddhism went to China, White Horse Temple is one such uh, example, even in Tibet. So, that th this, these links are there and uh, there. as a result, keeping aside China or Tibet or other countries, with, within uh, Asia, it's, it's very big. It was the Arab traders and the Indians who've been trading with each other. Uh, so, that, that unique uh, relationship is not there anywhere else, maybe in the Mediterranean, but certainly not between the Atlantic powers or between the Pacific. So we've got something to build on. It's important that you Yeah, see and we've also, most of us are either part of the <coughs> British Empire or the Dutch Empire or the True. French Empire. So we can work on it, yeah. Sir, thank you very much for your time. And it's been very educative and uh, wish you a very happy journey and safe travel back home and uh, the Union. Thank you. And I think India Foundation is doing a wonderful job in having this uh, talks and discussions. So your blessings have been there for the last seven, all yes, seven so far. <laughs> we'll hope that you'll continue to keep uh, India Foundation in your uh, text. <laughs> no, no, we'll keep focus on it. Right, sir. Right.